Hello folks, my name is Georgios Papadopoulos and welcome to this video on port roles and states that were defined in the original version of the spanning tree protocol in the IEEE 802.1d standard. Now for this video I assume that you know the basic functions of STP to prevent bridge loops in Ethernet networks. Let's start with the port roles. Port roles define the job of the ports in STP. First, we have the root port. A root port is the port with the lowest root path cost value on a non-root bridge to reach the root bridge, which is the central point of the network. Then we have the designated port. A designated port is a port that has the lowest root path cost value on a given network segment compared to other ports on that network segment. Now, it should be noted that a network segment can have only one designated port. To summarize, a root port is a port that forwards frame to the root bridge, and a designated port is a port that forwards frames away from the root bridge. Finally, we have the non-designated port, or blocked port. A non-designated port is the switch port that has the highest root path cost value on a given segment. In practice, a non-designated port has no role to play and it is marked as a blocking port. And thus, it is not allowed to forward frames in order to prevent a network loop. Next. Let's have a look on port states. This specify the states the ports are in. Port can change states while moving from one port role to another. First, we have the disabled state. It is a port that is shut down. A network administrator has manually disabled the switch port or removed from the STP. Thus, in this case, a port doesn't participate in any operation of STP because it is considered non-operational. Next, there is the blocking state. A switch port enters the blocking state at time of election process. In this state, a switch port is blocking the traffic. Basically, it is a port that will cause a switching loop if it was active. More specifically, in this state, the switch only listens and processes the BBDU frames while all other frames are dropped. After 20 seconds, only the root port and designated ports move into the next state while the remaining ports stay in the state. Next, we have the listening state. In this state, STP determines whether the port should participate in frame forwarding or not. While being in the state, a switch port is not forwarding traffic and not learning MAC addresses, but it receives and sends BPDU frames while all other frames are dropped. A switch port remains in listening state for 15 seconds. Then we have the learning state. In this state, a switch port is not yet forwarding traffic, but it is learning the MAC addresses and updates its MAC address table. A switch port remains in learning state for 15 seconds. Finally, we have the forwarding state. Switch port enters the forwarding state after passing through all the states. In this state, a switch port is receiving, sending and forwarding traffic. A switch port remains in forwarding state until any change is detected in the network. It is worth mentioning that listening and learning states are transitional states. More specifically, ports enter these states while changing from one role to another. Here you can see the state transitions of a port. As it can be observed, a port transitions through several states prior to forwarding the frames. During the first transition, the port is initialized or enabled and enters the blocking state from the disabled state. The port will stay in the blocking state for up to 20 seconds by default 
and in particular till the max age time expires. Then the port is selected as either root or designated port and will enter the listening state. Next, when the time for keeping the port in transition states is reached and more, specific, and more specifically when the forward delay timer expires, which is up to 15 seconds by default, the port enters the learning or forwarding state. In the fourth transition, if a port is not a root or a designated port, or if there is a topology change, then the port enters back to blocking state. Finally, if a port is down or has STP disabled, the port enters the disabled state. I will conclude my video with this table that summarizes the STP ports states interface modes. And that's all folks. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video on spanning tree protocol.